Well, five days ago, this started out as a search in a small Alabama town, mm -hmm. and now it is nationwide. Uh, police in Alabama and elsewhere, including the FBI, are now looking for a dangerous inmate, also a suspected murderer who faces the death penalty, and the jail officer, officer the official in charge of him, also wanted in helping him escape. So Casey White is the inmate. Vicki White is the officer. They're not related. They have been on the run since Friday morning, and they got kind of a six-hour head start before anybody even noticed they were gone. They're considered armed and dangerous. They have a high-powered weapon. They have a shotgun. Now surveillance video has come out revealing the moments that they left those prison walls. We have now learned that the two had a special relationship for at least two years right under the noses of the entire department. So there was Vicki. She goes in. Out comes Casey in handcuffs and shackles. Um, notice that she's got her back to him, casually walking to the patrol car. He moseys on out, gets in the car. They were supposed to go to a mental health evaluation that was not ever scheduled. And of course, they don't arrive. Earlier tonight, I spoke with the sheriff who is running this investigation. This is his department, and here's what he told me. He would get favors uh, from her specifically that other inmates didn't get. An extra biscuit on his plate for breakfast. That sounds like a small thing. Things like that, little things that, that would mean nothing and be insignificant on the outside, but are major issues sometimes on the inside. Uh, maybe more than just a biscuit tonight. So <laughs> joining us for more, retired FBI Special Agent Bobby Chacon. It, I mean, it seems like something right out of a movie, right? Like, this, does, this doesn't happen. Uh, but, it, but, Bobby, it, but it will in, on Netflix in about a year. Well, and it also, Bobby, it could end really, really badly because this is a dangerous felon. Um, he faces the death penalty, has absolutely nothing to lose, and he's on the run. So first of all, um, they had a lot of time to plan this. If they've been in a relationship for two years, he's been behind bars, he's thought of nothing else but his escape. Um, so they could have had not just a getaway plan, but a getaway place that they're hiding out and they were prepared to do this. That's a great point, Marnie, because um, physically they are somewhat easy to spot. I mean, this, this guy is six foot nine, 300 plus pounds. He's a, he's a behemoth. He's a monster. He's the kind of person that if he was sitting in a restaurant, even a fast food restaurant, somebody that big walked in, you'd do a double take. You'd see him. She's much, much smaller. So to see them together would be a very obvious thing. So I think you're right on, on that in that they may be holed up somewhere simply because People are going to notice somebody that big, and, and particularly if they're with somebody much, much smaller like that. So I think that's a great point. I think that uh, the reports are that she recently sold her house for much below market value, which probably means she got an all-cash uh, deal, that, and that could be funding this, this getaway plan. Yep, she announced that she was retiring. She sold her house. She bought a car uh, the day before the two of them took off. She also recently lost her husband, so she was going through a tough time to a health issue. Um, Vicki's safety obviously is important tonight, Bobby, whether she went willingly or not. Um, she's disposable to this criminal um, who is capable of terrible, terrible things and no use to him um, once he's out, right? The minute she outlived, outlasts her, her um, functionality to him, her utility to him, uh, she's gone. The, the minute he sees her as a possible liability, she's gone. Um, and, and one of the people he was formerly in a relationship with uh, actually came out and made a public statement to that effect, pleading with her, saying, look, the minute he doesn't see you as a benefit to him anymore, he, you're gone. Your life is worthless to him. Um, this is a guy that doesn't value human life. He's got a hugely uh, violent criminal history. He's the worst case scenario for a fugitive hunt because, you, like you said earlier, he may not be taken alive. He may have that attitude. And I pray for the officers and the marshals who are tracking him down. I, I urge the public, if they see them, do not engage. Do not try to take their picture. Call the marshals. The U.S. marshals are on this. They have an app, a tip app that you can download, go to the Marshall's app and, and report any type of site scene, but do not approach them, do not take their picture, do not follow them, um, because this guy is extremely dangerous. Yeah, I mean, you're right, Bobby, and at some point he's gonna come up for air and you don't wanna be caught in the crosshairs of that. Um, a quote from his ex-girlfriend, by the way, who really has just been shouting from the rooftop in the last 24 hours how dangerous this guy is. She says, if 
um, and she's talking about Vicky here. If she is still alive, she needs to get the hell out. Run, run as far as you can and turn yourself in and contact somebody. Do the right thing before you lose your life or somebody else does. So how do they go about the marshals and this local department, which clearly um, this, is, this has gotten so big that they're going to need help finding him. How do they go about tracking him down? I mean, cell phones, digital evidence, the clues over the last two years trying to figure out what this plan was. Um, how soon before you think they surface? Well, it'll depend on with well, the fugitive. All the, the the main thing is how much funds they have to keep themselves squirreled away before they have to. Because the only reason they pop up, and if remember, Eric Rudolph was a fugitive in the North Carolina woods after the Centennial Park bombing for two years, and he only popped up because he ran out of food, and he he ran out of places to break into these cabins where he was getting food. So it will depend on how much cash they have. That will depend. That will that will serve as you know. They will only pop up if they have to. So right now, whatever their plan was, I'm sure the marshals are scouring their records, um, their communications, uh, their social media, whatever it is, to find out where they planned on going. Because it's really difficult to have a plan to go to a place without ever having searched it on the internet or been there on vacation or or something. You can't pick a place on a map and just go there without some kind of pre-staged intelligence about that place and how you went about getting that. And, and so uh, I'm sure they're scouring their backgrounds, particularly her background, to see if she got brochures for any place, if she looked into something on her home computer, anything like that. Um, that's what they're looking at to go because, like I said, it's it's almost impossible just to, to throw a, a dart at a map and say that's where we're going to go yeah. when you don't know anything about that place. Right, you're trying to follow the breadcrumbs. Uh, Bobby, real quick before we let you go, I mean, People do crazy things for love, but this is, I mean, this has to be, she had an exemplary record. She'd worked for the department for 16 years. She was announcing her retirement, not a blemish in, in her career, and then this. So some form of manipulation is, is speculative at this point, but I mean, what would provoke her to do this, to form this relationship with him? And I mean, what's happening behind prison walls that most of us don't know? Um, guards and inmates and, um, and, and manipulation potentially in this point, in this case. Yeah, well, you know, it's. It, I was talking to colleagues about this today. We're, we're befuddled about what ha, what motivated her to do this. But as you said, she was in an emotionally vulnerable state. She lost her husband recently. That could play into it. But these these guards and inmates do kind of bond because they're together all day, every day. They probably spend more time with these inmates than they do with their own families. Mm -hmm. So they have to really be on guard, and the system has to be set up to 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 determine whether or not this is happening, whether inappropriate relationships are happening, and to stop it before it gets to this point. Well, the manhunt continues tonight, and let's hope they're closing in on them, and we have news to report on it soon. Retired FBI Special Agent Bobby Chacon, um, good to have you on tonight. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.